Hi folks and welcome back to Fishing with Den. Right, well as you can see we're waggler fishing today and I wanted to address one of the biggest mistakes that I see being made, especially by newer anglers. Now, if you don't do this right, you're not going to catch many fish at all. In fact, in fact, if you catch any, I'd be surprised. It'd have to be suicidal. So what is it? Basically, all it is is sinking your main line between the tip of your rod and your float. Now, if you look at my float in this close-up view, you can see it's just sitting there. Um, it's, it's not doing anything. I've only just started, so I'm not expecting a bite just yet. But it's sitting there perfectly happily, and it's not moving. So... If I hadn't sunk the line, what would have happened? Well, the line would have formed a great big bow out there and that would have pulled the float sideways. So let me show you that now. I've got some bait on. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cast out to exactly the area where I'm going to be fishing. And I've got it on the line clip so it'll stop at that point. There we go. And I'm not going to reel or anything. I'm just going to allow the float to sit. Just need to check to make sure we've got the thing in view. Yep, it's on the close-up camera. So that'll sit in a second. You've seen the, the, the float uh, sit properly now to sort of half an inch or so above the water. And the bait's on the bottom. What you haven't seen probably is that the line is starting to form a bow. It's going from right to left because that's the way the wind's going. And fairly shortly now, it'll start to pull the float out of position. Now that usually takes sort of 30 seconds or so and it can happen on a flat calm day too because even on a flat calm day there's usually movement of the water surface even if it's only fractional. So here we go then, we've got a little bit of wind now and the, the, the line's on the, the surface. You should start to see the float just gradually going under, pulling down. There we go, it's just starting to, to go a little bit now. And see it going down, very, very slow. And you might think, oh, I've got a bite and you might strike. But basically all that's happening is that the surface tension causes the line to float. And that means that it pulls the line, at, you, you float out of position. You can see it sinking now. And you think, oh, I've got a bite, so I'll strike. Well, if you do this, you're probably never gonna catch many fish at all. So let's now show you how to do it correctly. So I use two ways to sink the line. The first one is to overcast and then reel back in. And the second one is to put the rod in the water and flip up. So I'll show you both of those as we go. First one then, overcasting. Uh, previously, when I showed you that wrong way to do it, I just had it clipped up to exactly where I was fishing. This time, I'm clipped up to about three or four turns past where I'm fishing. So if I cast out, because it's on the clip, that immediately straightened everything out and I put the rod down into the water. So one, two, three, four quick turns with the rod tip underwater and the float will be exactly where it needs to be. And again, if you look at the close-up, you'll see it's actually uh, just sitting there perfectly nicely. Now, today I'm quite up on a high bank, so I haven't actually got the full uh, rod tip in the water and that's something you should really do if it's still possible. Make sure everything is sunk between the tip of the rod and the float. And that way, it'll stay in position. Now, of course, the wind's just started to get up as we speak, um, which isn't going to help. And that's going to cause an undertow. All that means is the surface will be pushed by the wind. It'll hit the end of the pond down there. It'll turn under. And the areas underneath the water will actually move that way. So really, if, if it's moving that way, it is actually OK, because that's the way the current's going. You just can't have it so that the line is dictating what's happening to your float, but the current can dictate what's happening to your float. So that's the first one then. Um, cast in, I cast it to a line clip, pulled back four, and I knew I was ex exactly the right place. So that's how you do that. And I tend to do that in venues which are fairly shallow and where I don't want the float to be landing right on top of where I'm fishing, simply because I don't want to spook the fish, especially if I'm fishing in that much water. So that's the first way. Second way, oh, got a bit of a stick there, and it's taken my bait with it. Second way, I'll just put some bait on. Remember I was saying about this one, this is where you flick the rod tip up. So we'll do that next. This one probably won't be in shot of the zoom camera because I'm gonna to cast to the line clip again, which is further out this time, remember. But really, it's very simple. 
cast out, stop, and then put the line, sorry, engage the bail arm, rod underwater and just flick up hard. That normally gets rid of all of the, uh, the line on the surface, but if it doesn't, just take up any slack and flick up hard again. And that way, you can cast, let's say that far bank was a bit closer, for example, and I wanted to fish up close to that far bank. Well, I can cast to it, and the first way, of course, I'd reel in four times and be nowhere near it. But this way, by just doing the flick up method, I'm only going to bring, bring the, the float in just a very small distance. And that's great, as I say, for fishing to a far bank or to an island or some other feature like lily pads. You can keep it almost in the position where you cast it into. So that's it guys, it's actually very very simple isn't it? Um, by using those two methods you can now control your float. If you do leave your line on the surface like I was explaining, you're never going to catch very much at all and you're probably going to wind up giving up fishing because you can't catch. Now as I said it is very simple but it's vitally vitally important. You must make sure that the line between the rod tip and the float is absolutely sunk. Now there are odd occasions maybe when you're fishing shallow that you may not do that but for general purpose use this is what you need to do so hopefully you found that useful if you did give me a like and of course if you want to subscribe you can do that too anyway i'm going to carry on fishing now and uh, i'll probably see you next time bye then